Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Friday. We're already 11 days into the month of December, and I hope you guys are doing good. So I want to come here and, you know, spill some afternoon tea. So yesterday was a very interesting day. A lot of things happened. But first and foremost, I want to say rest in peace to Tiny uh, Lister, a.k.a. Debo. Who wants some of Debo? Oh, yeah. That's my boy, Pop. Um, we found out about his death late last night, and it was really sad because my really good friend Aaron, I'm in L.A., he's the one who first told me about the death, and he hit me up. And he was working with Debo a year ago um, to start managing him, and so he hooked him up with his really dope photo shoot. And I remember him hitting me up, and he was so excited, like, I got Debo, and, you know, he let me jump in the picture with him and take a really dope picture. So this was one of my favorite pictures of Aaron and Debo together. And so um, he's definitely taking it really hard that he passed. And he had nothing but good things to say about him even back then when they were working together. Like, he's cool. He's so down to earth. So right now they don't know how he passed away, but... It has been confirmed. Ice Cube also took to social media when the news broke um, to also send condolences to Tiny and his family. So y'all go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw what Ice Cube had to say. So now something else crazy that went down yesterday was this. Honey, nobody. Nobody at all. Here comes Bill Cosby. I just want to go ahead and shout out little Bootsy for having my back. <laughs> <laughs> so this entire situation is a hot damn mess. So if you guys do not know, back on September 1st, Little Boosie took to Twitter and he basically said, free Bill Cosby, let's start a petition. So it got a lot of retweets and likes and things like that. So I guess, you know, Bill Cosby wanted to thank him for that. So he says this on the 10th day of December 2020, I will pay homage to those who have supported me and my family simply by saying thank you. The first person recognized on this thank you Thursday is rapper at Boosie Official. Thank you for your support. And I'm praying you have a speedy recovery and for your mobility to be restored again. Thank you very much. Hashtag thank you Thursday. Hashtag thank you Bootsy. Hashtag get healthy Bootsy. Honey. So when that went viral, when I tell you, even Fat Albert and the Junkyard Gang was shook, okay? So of course, folks had a lot to say about that tweet, honey. So y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. All right, so you guys just saw the comments, the memes, and what folks had to say about Bill Cosby. Shout out Lil Boosie. So like I said, the whole situation is very interesting because Bill Cosby is the same man for many years who talked down to the hip-hop community, who talked down to rappers, who said that rappers need to pull their pants up. You know, black parents need to stop buying their kids Jordans and things like that. And I'm not saying that, you know, his message was wrong or that he didn't have, you know, good intentions with his message because a lot of things do need to change and get better in the black community. Right. But I do find it funny how when he was on his high pedestal and he was love, you know, he was the beloved father of America and white folks was rocking with him heavy. It's like he kept talking down to the black community. He kept talking down to hip hop and rappers. But now that he's at the lowest of the lowest point in his life he's now shot not a rapper like Lil Boosie so I find that very ironic you couldn't have told me this shit when I was a kid hoodie you couldn't have told me that Bill Cosby okay from the Cosby show would be sitting in prison for the next 10 years in my adult life and he'd be sitting here shouting out rapper Lil Boosie of all people so that entire situation was a hot damn mess so now what's going down is this if you guys do not know these rappers are going through it honey 
We have another rapper who's been shot. Um, his name is Zoe Dollars, and he was shot multiple times on Wednesday night. Down to a crime alert and the hunt for the gunman who shot at a South Florida rapper as he drove on the Julia Tuttle Causeway. Local Tennessee News reporter Christian De La Rosa is live with the details. Christian. Nicole, this rapper was on his way to Wynwood to get something to eat. Friends tell us he was then supposed to meet some friends at a strip club in Miami. Instead, he ended up getting shot. More money, more problems. Best known by his artist name, Zoe Dallas, Elvis Millard is alive and recovering after coming under a hail of bullets. To see this is like crazy. The little Haiti native was at a birthday party for fellow artist Tiana Taylor atop this parking garage on Alton and Lincoln Road Wednesday night. Everybody was there. Diddy was there. Investigators say the rapper left the party with a woman heading towards Miami, driving this black Mercedes on the Julia Tuttle Causeway. They pulled up to the car and shot it up. Friend and manager Donnie Dizzy Flores says the 30-year-old was struck multiple times in the leg, but managed to pull a U-turn back towards Miami Beach, where he flagged down a police officer for help. The woman who was with him was not hurt. Flores says Malor didn't have an altercation with anyone at the party. He wasn't fighting with nobody. He's not a he's not that type of guy. So again. The search is on for the shooter. Uh, police say they need your help. If you have any information that can help them make an arrest here, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at 305. And right now he is hanging on. He's in stable condition. So once again, this sparked a huge debate on social media. And this time a lot of rappers um, chose to chime in. And one of those rappers is Fabulous, okay? So Fabulous says, respectfully, being a rapper has become the most dangerous job in America. Black men are surviving the trenches, constant battles in war zone environments. They make something of themselves as artists become famous, make millions of dollars, change their lifestyle, and somehow still end up dead or in jail. So that is what Fabulous had to say. And so that caused a lot of debate. On top of Fabulous saying that, Fabio Foreign also stated this. He says, rappers are the most targeted people on earth. Targeted by the police, by other rappers, by media, by civilians, and everybody else that feels we shouldn't have all the things that we have. Then on top of that, Jim Jones also stated this. So Jim Jones went back and forth with an army vet. That was back in February. So a lot of people were coming at him saying, look what Fabulous and, you know, Fabio Foreign are saying. They're saying what you said. So let me go ahead and read to you guys the back and forth that went down in February with Jim Jones and this army vet. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Jim Jones says, is this opinion or facts? I need answers, y'all. Like I said, being a rapper is one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. So somebody replies back to Jim Jones and they state, I heard the comments you made about being a rapper is harder than fighting a war in Iraq. You are allowed to have your opinion without any facts nor truth to it. But as a vet and a hip hop fan, I found it extremely disrespectful and ignorant. Here's some facts. My unit, which fought in Iraq in 2004, lost more Marines in two months than rappers in the past three years. Keep talking, but there is zero comparison. So that was one of the fans replying back to Jim Jones. So then Jim Jones says this. Every nigga I grew up with is either dead or in jail. So you want to compare death tolls? It won't add. You went to the army and met niggas you never knew or grew up with. I grew up with all these niggas all my life. So it hit different. You want to continue this debate? Y'all was shooting at kids and innocent bystanders in the midst of shooting at the enemy. We was kids shooting at kids, and that mentality split over to success. Remember, you knew who your enemies were. We didn't. And everybody knows who we are because of our notoriety. So how you protect yourself from your enemies, you can't see. We all were, we all were in the same uniform. Everyone, in, everyone is drippy. But y'all had American uniforms on and the enemy had their uniforms on. You had the choice of going to war. We didn't. We was at war when we was born. Let the church say amen. All right, so you guys just heard me read that. So, of course, Jim Jones, he took to social media yesterday to basically reiterate the fact. So y'all go ahead and check out what Jim Jones had. To Observation. 
A couple years ago, I told you that being a rapper was one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. And even my peers gave me flack for that, told me that I was bugging. I got a lot of backlash for saying that. Got people from the armed forces calling me, telling me I'm bugging. But actually, I wasn't. So now, in the light of everything that's been going on, RIP to everybody that we lost. And I hope you get healthy quickly to everybody that's been affected or injured or, you know, in this past few months where we get to see everything that I was talking about. We are a target. Do we make ourselves a target? Sometimes. Is it fair? No, not at all. But nevertheless, to all my artists, to all my rappers, stay safe and stay dangerous. And I hope you don't have to get dangerous. You heard? I holler. Jones. All right, so you guys just heard what Jim Jones had to say about the entire situation. So this is very interesting. Now, if you guys do not know, Fabulous's stepdaughter, who is Emily B's daughter, um, she's pregnant by G Herbo, who is currently facing federal charges. She's about four months pregnant, and he's trying to use her pregnancy to, you know, be able to get out on bail. Like, oh, my fiance, my girlfriend is pregnant, and I want to be with her and all this other stuff. So that's probably why Fabulous is speaking up. Because his daughter is knocked up by a rapper who's probably going to be facing a lot of time. But with that being said, do I feel like being a rapper is the most dangerous job in America? I don't believe that. And y'all know me. I believe in energy. And the things that you put out there, the seeds that you plant, at some point, they come to harvest. I don't know why this just eludes grown adults, okay? Do you notice that in any other genre, they're not talking about killing other black people? They're not talking about, you know, low vibrational debauchery. The reason why so many rappers are ending up shot caught up by the police and everything else is because of the energy that they themselves are putting out there, okay? You don't see rock and roll people getting popped. You don't see country music stars, you know, g getting drive-bys done on them. It is rappers. When you're talking about certain things, you can bring certain energy to you. We've been saying that since the days of Tupac. Tupac talked about death all the time. He kept talking about not making it to the age of 30. That man always talked about death. And guess what happened? Death came knocking. If a lot of these rappers truly wanted to change, not only would they change their energy, they would change their lyrics, and they would change their situations. You cannot be talking about you're a hitter, you're a shooter, you got bodies, and then you want to go back to the same hoods where people are starving, don't have nothing, and you think the wolves are not going to come after you? You're crazy. It's about the energy that you put out there. You got all these rappers trying to portray a lifestyle that they shouldn't be forced to portray. It's okay to be a Joe Schmo. If you don't have the money coming in to floss this icy lifestyle and all these cars and fancy vacations, then guess what? That's okay. But if you choose to start scamming and stealing people's identities just so you can floss on social media to make not only your fans but the wolves feel a certain type of way, I don't feel bad for you, okay? A lot of these rappers are getting themselves into silly situations. With the whole Jim Jones situation, this man is grown. Half those dudes that were with Nine Trey, half them Treyway dudes were twice the age of um, six, nine, and they still got themselves caught up. Why? Because they were looking for fame. They were looking for attention. And to them, that was more important than common sense. No one co-signed six, nine. Who is this dude? But y'all have him involved in gang shit. Y'all have him green lighting hits on other rappers. And now he's free living his best damn life. And meanwhile, the shot callers and the older guys in that gang who are damn near 37 to 40, they're looking at double digits. They will not be out to their damn near in their 60s. Whose fault is that? At what point do we take personal responsibility for the things that we are engaging in, for the energy that we're putting out there? If these dudes really wanted to change and they didn't want certain energies coming to them, they would not be engaged in the foolishness. So I think to say that rapping is the most dangerous occupation is bullshit. You have people who are risking their life every day for a dollar digging in coal mines to make sure that we have energy. You have people out here risking their mental health every day on the front lines of the hospitals during the whole C-19 pandemic to make sure that they are able to try and save lives. I think those are dangerous jobs. You have a lot of people working nine to five jobs that are putting their regular lives on the line every day just to pay their bills.
So as you guys see, there are way more dangerous jobs out here than being a rapper. And the sad part is that a lot of these jobs that we don't even realize how many people are putting their lives on the line, just regular everyday people, they're not making millions of dollars per year. They're not iced out. Many of them don't even get a thank you. How many times do we thank coal miners for all of this energy that helps heat our homes and things like that? How many times do we thank architects for, you know, the cool designs and the buildings and, and the homes and things like that that they build? But we don't realize how many architects end up falling to their death. We don't realize how many uh, coal miners end up suffering from severe lung diseases from being underground. So you have a lot of regular people who have to pay their bills whose jobs are a lot more riskier than rappers. So I think it's very unfair to say that and act like, you know, rapping is such a dangerous job. No, at least in y'all's profession, it's high profile. People get a chance to mourn you publicly. People give you all types of remembrances. How many regular people who get hurt on the job or killed on their job ever get any type of remembrance like that? So, you know, we have to take the good with the bad. And I just think it's really sad that so many rappers feel like in order to be real, they have to, you know, what I'm saying sit around and flash gang signs, talk about how many bodies they have, hang around seedy places like strip clubs and, you know, just clubs in general. And, you know, and you're wealthy. You know, what I'm saying and you're flaunting your wealth, you're flaunting your wads of cash. It's not worth it. Just like the rapping dentist. You know, when I when I talked about that, like you can't serve two masters. He got his money legitimately by fixing people's teeth. Kudos to him. He went to school. He worked hard. But then he still wanted to be a rapper and live that lifestyle and put on that persona of flossing real jewelry, money, you know, high end clothing. Should we be able to show off our shit and, and, you know, nothing happened to us? We should be. But in the real world, unfortunately, it's not like that. So when you put out a certain energy, you're calling people to you. Back in the day when you got robbed, when people got robbed, it was usually people close to you. You were able to narrow it down because you'd be like, well, damn, only five people been in my house. Only a handful of people know where I live. So you could narrow it down to, to an inside job. But the problem with social media is that when you're sitting here flossing and showing your location and people can Google your home and people can Google, you know, uh, your dental office. And you're showing all this stuff off. You are inviting people from everywhere. Social media is global. It's, you, it's not even the local people, the local thugs and wolves that you have to worry about. You got people flying in to commit crimes from other states. You got people driving in from other cities to commit crimes. So people need to think about the things that they're doing. And once they start doing smarter things, guess what? There won't be as many rappers getting shot because rappers will start thinking like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't show this off. I want y'all to think I'm broken, don't have shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you change your lyrics around so that way people can see you more like a fat Joe or see you more like a outcast. You notice people don't try them. You notice people don't run up on them. You, you haven't heard. They've been in the game. Both All three of these rappers have been in the game 20 plus years. No one tests them because last time I checked, they don't rap about bodies. They don't rap about being about that life. They just make fun music. Okay? So that is the difference. So no, I don't think being a rapper is the most dangerous job. But I do think that it's very sad that so many rappers are being targeted by the police due to their own actions. I do think that it's sad that so many rappers are being shot and, and you know, confronted and robbed and things like that. And it's sad. Even with the Benny the Butcher situation, you're Benny the Butcher. Why are you going to Walmart in a Rolls Royce with a bunch of jewelry on? Why? You know, so we have to think smarter. Think about your moves. If anything, send somebody to go to Walmart, go grab something for you. Or, you know, get an Uber. You know, it's it, like we have to get out of this whole flashy mentality because it's not worth it. All this, you know, I'm beefing with this person. I'm calling this person out on wax. It's not worth it. All the beefing that Mo3 was doing in, in Texas and calling out different rappers and all the beef that he had with different people, he's dead. And he's not there to see his kids this Christmas. It's not worth it. 
So anyways, y'all, that's all I had to say about the situation. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on all of this stuff, you know. How do you guys feel about um, the death of Tiny Debo Lister? How do you guys feel about Bill Cosby shouting out Lil Bootsy? And then how do you guys feel about all of these rappers coming out and saying that, you know, being a rapper is the most dangerous job in America? Do you agree with them or do you feel like, no, it's not the most dangerous job. It's about the energy that they're putting out there. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Make sure if you're not subscribed, you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share the video. Make sure you thumbs it up. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell. So that way you can be down with the notification squad. Talk to you guys later. Deuces.